why do we use tubes here at Family Labs? We're known as the tubes rule company. It's something we're well versed in. I mean, I've been hearing about how great tubes are all my life, from my starting with my dad, who owned Ampeg back in mm -hmm. the 60s, you know. They're inherently linear devices. Their amplifying stages are simple. You can use fewer stages of amplification. You know, with pre-amplifiers, or small signal stages. We usually tend to use uh, single-ended designs. They're class A, zero crossover distortion. It's a very clean and fast sounding thing. It's very, it's not very colored sounding at all, you know, and we can add a transformer if we wish to introduce a little color at the choice of the engineer. He can switch it in and out. Basically, over here on this shelf is where we keep all of our tubes that have not yet been tested. Um, so as you can see, everything we try to keep relatively clearly labeled. Take this 12AX7, for example. We'll take this and we move on over to the burn-in area. And these tubes, as you can see, go right over in here, like this. And this is where they stay for anywhere between five hours to several days, depending on how, how often we need to be changing them up. And what it does is it just runs current through the tubes so that they burn in, um, which basically we do to make sure that it won't fail immediately once it goes into a unit. After they've been here for several days or several hours, depending on how long we need them to be there, it moves over to these other sections. Um, meaning this desk right here. Um, we have these programs that were written many years ago that are basically used for testing these tubes. So noise ratings and current draw um, from driver tubes to output tubes to input tubes. This is where we rate them to decide which pieces of gear we can actually use them in. Um, because in some cases, well, a tube may be quiet enough or have high enough gain to be able to be used in one piece of equipment, um, the gain might not be low enough for another type. We use, them, we use them for various pieces of equipment depending on the gain of the tube. We try to use as many as we can because uh, obviously it's not, a very, it's not a very good business practice to buy lots and lots of tubes and use as few of them as possible. So we use as many as we can and the ones that we do not use go back over onto the shelf on the other side, um, which is our reject shelf. Over here, we have the other part of the tube testing area. So we have our settings over here on the machine, just so we know um, what kind of tube is on there. These settings change which pins um, allow what voltages to go through where, where the heater pins are, where the audio comes through, etc. And then with this one, this mode switch tests for either noise which in this case is around 30. So you can see up there the tube noise grade sheet. If the noise is below 25, it's considered a gold rated tube, which would be eligible for use in our microphones. With the microphones, they have to undergo another test, which actually is with one of these right here. This mic adapter um, switches the order of the triodes inside the tube. So basically we test one half of it on this machine here, and then we plug the tube in to the top of this right here and put it back on. And what that does is it reverses the triode order and allows us to look at the gain on the other side. Um, basically, these are older Manly amplifiers, which you may recognize. We've uh, modified them so that rather than um, being able to bias the tubes from these bias points on the front, you're actually reading the bias from it and it's going into our computer over here. So you can check the current draw of the tubes and make sure that they're not pulling too much or too little. Um, this computer program is one that we wrote many years ago to be able to do that. And you can see how they come up um, with these numbers here. We also use this, with, with the numbers we get from this, we use it to match tubes for specific sets of amplifiers. So for example, if we need 10 KT90s, for a large power amplifier, we'll be able to match them with their current draws so that the amplifier circuit will be balanced the whole way through. Um, with power amplifiers, there's something about the high voltages and the big impact in sound that that has. Big storage, big impact. You get a big bass drum, bam, and you just, you feel it, you know. It's not just a, a flat thing that just goes thuck, it's a boom. 
That's one thing we've always liked about tube amplifiers is they just sound natural. They sound real to us.